just before I dive into what Casa does, um, most people probably know some type of hydro wallets. Uh, um, I guess, should I ask, like, who owns a hydro wallet here? Yeah. Please, yes, most. I see all people. Anyway, uh, so Trezor was the, the first commercially successful hardware wallet. Uh, he was the co-founder of the company uh, in 2013. I'm a Bitcoiner by heart, uh, uh, or through heart since 2010, when I discovered Bitcoin as a part of uh, my research for better form of money, as I was looking for an alternative to the non-functional petrodollar and the uh, euro and uh, non-convertible yuan and uh, the, the, the failed project of IMF and SDR, especially for Android. So I found Bitcoin in 2010 when full uh, crypto in 2013. And uh, last year, 2018, I joined CASA as head of strategy. Um, and so today I, I'd like to take the opportunity to explain what CASA does. I don't want to take too much time because I would prefer we mingle afterwards and just uh, have a normal talk. Okay. Um, so this is a uh, this is my uh, opening slide. Uh, everyone knows here. I mean, we are all Bitcoiners that Bitcoin we can say is inherently secure, but uh, uh, we as users love to shoot ourselves in the foot uh, by trying to doing the best uh, security we can. And uh, it's not uh, it's not our fault. I mean, I would love for everyone to be a hardcore Bitcoiner and run his uh, full node and operate all his uh, backend and everything by himself, right? But that's not the reality. Uh, so the reality is that uh, there's a, a, a small group of people that are early adopters and they know how to run the stuff. And for the others, we need to just do uh, user-friendly tools, right? Me, myself, I started to run a Bitcoin full node only when someone released AB Core for mobile phones and <laughs> it was a simple application that allowed me to run it, you know, just clicking next. So I'm the kind of user. Um, so I would love to continue what I started with uh, Trezor and Hardware Wallet and bring usable security to people. Um, so what are the risks for a Bitcoiner? I, this is my attempt to, to, to categorize the, the risks, right? Uh, uh, the external events uh, such as, uh, you know, market manipulations and, and uh, legal environment, those are events that we as individuals have very little power over. Uh, we can lobby or decide not to lobby, right? And go our own way, but this, that's basically what we can do. And uh, third party risk, digital, and, and all the others I will comment uh, as we go through it. Um, but basically, how can we mitigate the risks? The external will always be present, so we can just like hedge against political risk or you know, uh, find uh, other ways. There will be always states uh, or governments who will try to um, you know, find regulation for crypto or, or tax uh, unjustly uh, or your, your Bitcoin transactions. Uh, there will be always like people like this, um, <laughs> you know, with a lot of uh, power on the market. So uh, we cannot do much about it unless we become, you know, like uh, powerful uh, like this guy. Uh, so external risk, I would say like, okay, let's keep it and not deal with it because in every risk management, by the way, I was working in risk management for 10 years before uh, with Bitcoin. And in risk management, you always have a group of risks that you just simply don't uh, cover, you don't insure, or you don't do anything either because the risk is too big. Um, or it, it just happens once in a time and you just uh, go with it. So um, the third part is and digital threats were basically solved by introduction of hardware wallets, right? So with a hardware wallet that basically made it easy for people like me or my mom to manage their crypto uh, securely uh, and not to give it away to any third party. Um, and the digital threats such as viruses and, and hackers that was sold by separation of private keys into the secure environment 
of, of an offline device in this all the, the hardware world. Now, that's all great uh, that we have that. Uh, uh, one of them looks like this. This is the latest version of Trezor. I don't know if maybe he's selling. Are you guys selling some hardware wallets here? Not that they see, but there are people yeah. that are selling in Israel. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Bits of gold also is to sell them. I'm not sure yeah, what they yeah, still do. Yeah, yeah. Good partners. Uh, there are some others, so make your do your research if you want to choose. Uh, I will not tell you which one is the best one, but. It's right there on the screen. It's, uh, okay. Um, anyway, hardware wallets solve these risks pretty well. Um, uh, but uh, there are, uh, you know, certain things that we introduce by by creating a hardware wallet, or better to say, by creating a BIP39 standard, which is uh, the vocabulary that defines the 20,000, I think, 48 words uh, to create the mnemonic seeds. So mnemonic seed, as you all probably know, is the 12 to 24 words to back up your, your private keys. Now, um, it's, a, it's an amazing invention. When I first found out how it works, I was quite amazed because you pick up something once at the beginning and then any time in the future, you can kind of roll back and have all the transaction history included, right? So that, that was, a, for me, a mind-blowing concept of a new way to pick up stuff, right? And this is something uh, very powerful in, in Bitcoin that a lot of people don't realize we have now. Uh, but, you know, we are creative, so uh, we like to do stupid things, and uh, sometimes we do uh, things like uh, even counter, counter everything that is recommended, and uh, the thing is, it's not the user's fault, actually, that he's not reading well. The problem is that we need to make all the system and tools such <coughs> as that they even don't have space to screw up. Okay, that would be like the optimal um, setup. So we, you know, we underestimate risk. We hate to do backups. Uh, we basically uh, sometimes do stuff. Um, we do bad programming at times and uh, it just can turn up into people, you know, sending high fees uh, because the, the, uh, the interface of, of the wallet just allows you to do that, right? And that's bad programming. So, uh, the human nature is try to uh, try to uh, uh, it's, uh, it's difficult to curve just like that, but so we need to find tools to make it better. This is some chain analysis. Chain analysis. I always have problems with that name. Uh, ana chain analysis. Yeah, it's chain analysis. Um, they estimate some four million bitcoins lost, access lost, and that's like the uh, you know. It's not a good news for Bitcoin. It's great news. Although so for some, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes. but you can lose only as much of the circulation. <laughs> and, but just uh, add more, more decimals, okay? Uh, those of us that didn't lose, yes. it's net positive. But for those who lost those Bitcoins, it's very bad news, right? <laughs> uh, and also, you know, in the past two years, I've noticed uh, raising rising trend in extortions and kidnappings uh, and uh, even killings for Bitcoin and that is some phenomena that was not really frequent before. It of of course it comes with a uh, with increasing price um, on Bitcoin, but uh, really the amount of of physical uh, risk is is increasing and so we need to find ways how to protect. This is a GitHub repo uh, derived graph. It, it, um, it's linked by James Lobb, my colleague at NASA. And he basically tries to track all the physical attacks versus Bitcoin price. And that it kind of, it's not a scientific research, not a study uh, that, that would be totally in depth. But I think he has, because he himself has been uh, extorted and his uh, house was uh, had been raided. Um, that's why a lot of people come to him and report stuff uh, that is not publicized. So he has probably the most uh, cases of, of physical, you know, attacks uh, over big miners. Now, the 
the usual um, suspicion is that you know, as you are and, and many, for example, is exposed in the in the business has been in Bitcoin forever. So you are somehow exposed person, right? And the assumption is that exposed people in the crypto will uh, be more likely to, a target, you know, than uh, than uh, people who are not exposed. But the issue is that uh, uh, there's uh, millions of people who have been KYC uh, on exchanges, and so if Coinbase has 25 million accounts, that means they have 25 million uh, private like, names, addresses. Uh, proofs of residence, uh, transaction history. So if someone would, I hope not, but if someone would steal these 25 million uh, lines of data, I think we have 25 million potential targets. And especially if Bitcoin goes crazy with the price. Um, so what's the solution? There's two options today. Uh, you can either go to a bank right with physical money when you had piles of money you had the, the option to distribute the, the, the piles into three pieces and have some in your office and some under your mattress right and but the problem is when a when a robber came then he ended up having all that money right so um that's luckily uh, not the case for bitcoin because today we can do multi sick and uh, even if someone would steal one of your Pile, right, uh, one of your wallets, then he wouldn't get on the on the crypto. And so I think the solution is to support the sovereign and secure hardware, a bitcoiner that uh, would have all the tools necessary. And that's where that's where Casa comes into play. Um, here's a, like a summary of the three three main um, products that we have. We have a little bit more of them. I will show you. Uh, others as I, as I continue, but basically we started off with the uh, Keymaster. Uh, Keymaster was the first product. It's a uh, we call it a key management uh, application. It's not a wallet. Okay, we manage keys, uh, and we don't really like the, the, the term a wallet. But basically that's what it does. Uh, it's a multi-sig app with a dedicated client advisory. Something that. Uh, that the market doesn't see. So, as I said, you can go either to a bank. Uh, the other option is you have your hardware wallet and you set up everything yourself. So there's nothing in between and Casa wants to, to bridge that by user experience. We have the Casa node and the security checklist. I'll go through all of them one by one. Um, the Casa Keymaster is uh, basically comes with a multi sig app I think we are the first who managed to create multi sig as a, as a user experience. So you basically have something like a key shield on the app. It's a three of five multi sig uh, that allows you to just you know tap and either connect a hardware wallet or uh, replace it if, you, if it gets stolen. Um, we came up with something that's called key shield. That's the uh, that's the multi sig. And basically, we are building on top of existing hardware wallets, treasures, and ledgers. Uh, our clients, all, all of them have both. So we like to have our clients have a combination of the two. And we would also like to um, add more hardware wallets in the future. But uh, the issue is that there is no, um, not enough, um, let's say, pro hardware wallets proven by, by practice and, and, you know, um, by time, uh, that would also have separate code base. Uh, so Ledger and Trezor definitely have a separate code base, but then there are some clones of Trezor and nothing original. So we are waiting for the third <coughs> hardware wallet to come up. Um, everything that we do is very user experience focused. We hired the, uh, our designer from Tinder. Uh, he, he invented the swipe left and right, <laughs> and he saw everyone who was laughing. I don't know, we know he's using uh, Tinder. Uh, but also the, the, the super like, uh, there's something like super like that you can buy and then like someone really fast. That, that basically makes Tinder a profitable company. So we hired that guy to kind of reign all, all, over everything that we do, and the good thing is he's not a Bitcoiner. 
right? <laughs> so he spots um, uh, moments where pe normal people, non-Bitcoiners, would get lost easily. Um, the way we uh, we uh, basically build this up is uh, the the three of five multi six sig is um, composed of three hardware wallets uh, in different locations of one hardware wall or one wallet uh, one account that is held by Casa and uh, another key that's on the phone. So the user, our clients have four of total five keys. So they keep complete control. There is no situation where Casa could move the funds uh, without the cooperation or the will of, of the owner. Um, the biggest, oh, well, we come with a 24 seven service. Uh, this is something unseen in the crypto space. Uh, as I said, you either have a, a, a Bitcoin bank Right, such as Coinbase, or you have a treasure, but there is no service, no person to call. And so we said, okay, we will provide uh, very well educated uh, client advisors that you know will not hold your crypto, but will hold your hand if you want. Um, the, the most, the, the best, uh, or the biggest invention that we came up uh, was um, a seedless multi sig. Uh, so as I said, the uh, we introduced a new problem to holding hardware wallets or wallets, which is how to protect the recovery seat. And uh, if you want to set up a multi-seat yourself, so there's the 305 multi-seat, you have basically five different wallets and five different recovery seats. So if you want to distribute, you know, you want a better uh, security, but then you end up with 10 different items that you need to protect, ideally in a separate Secure location. It's kind of a. Uh, that's exactly like the first picture where the guy sits and he shoots himself in the foot. He wants a better multi sig uh, and a better security, but ends up with with an unsolvable problem because a normal person doesn't have ten different locations, right? So we said, okay, let's keep the seat and use the properties of multi sig that allow you to do uh, a very much more simple disaster recovery than, than what you would do if you run your own multi-seed. Uh, here, you basically can use you know, one of the four keys, uh, three of the four keys that you have, or you can ask you and Casa to co-sign. Uh, so if you lose one of the, the hardware wallets, for example, you just basically um, uh, set it in the, in the app as compromised, and you do a key rotation to a new multi-sig structure, replacing the, the missing hardware wallet in less than a minute. It's a, it's a user uh, experience that was never seen in multi-sig before. I don't know how many of you have tried setting it up and maintaining your multi-sig, but it's not really easy, uh, at least not for people that don't have the time to spend on it. Do you require three out of five? Yes, this is like the, the, the top level that we're providing. Um, this is a premium level service. We uh, charge uh, $10,000 flat fee per year. We are not charging uh, bips on assets under management because we don't want to do that. We don't want our clients be thinking and recalculating, right? But we uh, put a lot of uh, thought in, uh, in the security process, in, in the flight transfers, in uh, things such as uh, protecting uh, the, the hardware wallets against some um, electromagnetic pulses and stuff like that. So we are really, um, you know, are there for the customer all the time. Uh, this is a premium level service, but you know, eventually we want to trickle down and introduce some lower tiers to make it, you know, more available for for the masses, not just for the crypto wealthy. Let's say. Um, so these are the key sets. Uh, basically, we have the key shield, which is a 305 multi sig for Bitcoin, and we have some single, single keys. So you can use uh, the, the, the app with a Trezor or a Ledger, either to, as a watch-only wallet, right? if you don't have uh, the Trezor on you, uh, or just to co-sign, uh, or, or basically just sign with, uh, with the hardware wallet and make it a more Bitcoin transaction. We'll be, we, we're not really uh, comfortable with the multi-sig um, 
state in Ethereum. Uh, so we are kind of waiting out on the Ethereum community to introduce something that would be validated. Maybe the Gnosis uh, smart contract will do that, but we are basically a Bitcoin first company. So even if we uh, will introduce more uh, coins and uh, uh, you know more assets, uh, there will be always uh, the notion of Bitcoin first. We are huge Bitcoiners in, in Tesla. Anyway, um, and there is no sovereign Bitcoiner uh, unless he runs this full node, right? And because I know from my experience that it was difficult until I got some, some easy to use app. Um, and also we want to scale and support uh, the Lightning Network. So we basically created some off-the-shelf parts uh, node, you know, we assembled, but the main work that we put into this was the user interface. So what is a Tesla node? It runs basically two applications today. One is a Bitcoin full node that comes precinct, uh, so you don't have to wait, you know, days or weeks even to sync up the, uh, the blockchain. Um, you can also start to, if you don't trust Casa that we have done some validations, then you can also go from scratch, but I don't recommend because it's a Raspberry Pi, so it will really take like a month uh, to get up on speed. Uh, so don't click that button, maybe. <laughs> Some people did, and uh, <laughs> now they're crying. Anyway, um, uh, it, the Lightning Note uh, is a second application, and, and uh, we uh, created an autopilot that will open uh, appropriate amount of channels, fund the channels, uh, calculate like the optimized way to, to do that. It's Again, if you... Hmm? It's not a standard autopilot, can you LMD? Uh, this is ours, and uh, but you can turn it off. Okay, you, you can do manual settings as well, of course, and uh, you know, fund, fund the channels as you, as you fit and connect with anyone as you, as you want. Uh, it has a uh, one terabyte drive uh, and a simplified web user interface. This is just like two of the screenshots of how it looks like. It's kind of easy. Okay. Uh, that's it. Mm, interesting colors, though. Anyway, uh, this is our Lightning Explorer. That's another product we issued uh, recently, Explore.casa, where you can, because we were not happy with the Lightning Explorers available uh, on the market, so we just thought, hey, why not to create our own? And um, we also did a nice star map, so if, you, if someone wants to visualize and look you know, your, for your own uh, node and, and, and click the node and be the center of the lightning universe, then you can do that and share the screenshot with your friends. It's just like people love to see stuff. Right? So that's, uh, that's one thing. And you know, the note itself costs uh, $300, uh, single time purchase. Um, and this uh, CASA security checklist is basically our third product, if you, if you want to call it that way. It's a free product, basically you only sign up to create an account and then you can go through a self health check, I would say, and, and see as a Bitcoiner, uh, whether you make everything possible to protect your crypto. It's a very simple thing to do, just like yes and no to a few questions and then it gives you your results and then it gives you like uh, advice what to do if you don't have a second factor uh, authentication set up or what to do if you don't have a password manager and stuff like that. So we want to educate people to be more like security aware uh, as well, so feel free to to go and try it yourself. Mm, this is uh, it's on the app. Dot kids. Dot casa. <laughs> Good morning. And you you'll get basically something like something like this. Okay, so that's like the overview. Thanks for your attention. I mean, yeah, if you want to, uh, uh, some Q&A session, sure, and then we can just mingle. Can we see what's in the box? Yeah. 
uh, managing mutual funds when you have a small crypto company and you are three uh, co-founders, right? So this makes it uh, much easier than to figure it out through Electrum or through Copay or I don't know, uh, to uh, setting it up yourself. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Can you go into more detail regarding seedless? Yes, yeah, so basically when, when our clients uh, first get onboarded, okay, uh, they, uh, for, for uh, Ledger, they need to temporarily write down uh, the 24 words because uh, they are checking uh, if you wrote them down. Uh, but, but basically our clients do not store the 24 words for none of their wallets. So they have a total of four keys on themselves. They have three hardware wallets and the phone and they don't say the words. That means uh, when they lose, Who's one, the fifth? You Casa. Casa is the fifth key. <coughs> do you so, store seeds? Or do you also... Uh, I will not tell you details on the security <laughs> of the key, I'm sorry. But, uh, uh, so when, when they lose one of the device, instead of going, finding the backup and, and re recovering the, the hardware wallet into a new device, instead of that, we overnight a new hardware wallet to the client, and basically he only uh, shifts the money to a new multisig. Why? Because he still has four of the five keys, and he only needs three of them to move the funds. Customers never initialize the hardware wallets. They do. They do. So why do you need to overnight each time? Because when you lose one, we have yeah, that, that's a that's a part of our service, right? So you don't have to go and buy it yourself. That's why we pay ten thousand dollars that you have everything available and fast, right? That makes sense. Okay. Why not have just a spare one in the house and uh, yeah, that's and also who puts the seed in the treasure when you receive it? Nobody. You set it up yourself. You just don't write seed. down the seed and you don't store it. So where? How do you remember it? You don't. You don't. <laughs> it's just on the house. Just on the house of the device, and not on the not the backup. You don't have a paper backup because if you lose it, you don't need to recover so it. Overnight, you overnight. And you want blank, so blank device, blank device. device. And what you do instead of replacing that one missing device in the multi sig structure, oh, oh, you, you just send you send the money to a new multi sig mm -hmm. setup with okay. a new key. Okay. And you, you choose not to write down your seed trace just because of security, and you could yes. if you wanted to, right? You, well, you, you could, but that just defeats the purpose. Right, okay. No, it becomes useless afterwards. So. It, becomes, it becomes useless, it becomes a security burden. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, so, I mean, I would prefer to give a paper backup than the actual house of the wife. Yeah. The paper Why? backup is much easier to hide. I know the, also the hardware, the hardware wallets, I don't actually tell them not to be hackable with physical access, as we've seen like, mm -hmm. many, many times. Yeah, but, so yeah, but if you have a key distribution. to wipe out the device and have it on paper. Mm -hmm. If you I have mean, a key distribution in different locations, and the, the, if, even if someone gets access to one of your hardware wallets, they cannot do anything about your money. Like the multi -sync setup. No, I mean, they have one of five keys. Yeah, they would right, have to yeah. have three. Right. Right. Okay. So we assume that uh, you can lose one, right? At the same time, if you lose two at the same time, you are a very unlucky person <laughs> or clumsy or something, right? Yeah. But you probably shouldn't lose more than that at the same time, right? When I, when I need CASA to do something about the keys or anything, do I have to call them or do I do it from the app? Or? You, have a, you have a dedicated client advisor that uh, he knows you and you know him. Uh, there's even uh, situations you can uh, emerg do emergency lockup, for example. Our client advisor immediately contacts you, does a FaceTime with you to validate if you're under duress or uh, stuff like that. <coughs> Like, could, could you have a setup where I always need you so that I know that if uh, nobody, uh, even if somebody ha hacks all my devices or steals all my devices, they're still unable to, to get my money? 
you can have, for example, your lawyer instructed, you know, you can give one of the keys to your lawyer and say, um, if I call you and I insist on sending my money, you call the police, mm -hmm. right? right? You can set uh, different scenarios. I mean, this is, this is a part of the client advisory that we do, that we look at the situation of each customer differently, right? If it's a, a small company, uh, that then the procedures are different than if it's an individual hodler uh, whose main concern is, for example, uh, succession planning, right? Um, or physical security. I mean, this this is doable, and we don't want to prescribe like specific how to because we don't want to set the precedence. We don't. Want, there there should be no template for a behavior. Because the, mo the moment you issue and create some standard uh, in the market, then it's much easier for the, for the criminals. Yes, <laughs> right? They will assume <coughs> that you have one hydro wallet in your office, right? So you don't want to install ideas. Yeah, exactly. Okay, any more questions or we want to mingle? Well, what do you expect <laughs> your customers to be? I mean, obviously, there's a pretty rich, but this, uh, the Keymaster product is live since uh, early summer to uh, 2018, and we have paying customers, so I can tell you not like who we expect, but uh, who are the customers are either, let's say, Bitcoin OGs, people who have been early in the game, uh, and they have a certain amount of crypto. So I'd say uh, if it's $500,000 uh, and more, or the Bitcoin that's the typical customer that would land at Casa right now because uh, of our offering. Um, we have family offices, so people who are not really crypto people but have invested substantial money. We have some small investment funds. Uh, we have crypto Bitcoin companies, crypto teams. Exchanges we have even, like uh, we are not, this is not a, a solution for exchanges, this is not enterprise level solution. It's for individuals and small teams, um, mostly, yeah. Can the customer <coughs> to move to the casino? So, uh, we are, uh, no, <laughs> not yet, uh, we are working on, on that. It's definitely up to them. Right now, there's a, an issue. It's protected against outbound, like um, outside connections, right? For security reasons, you have the casa. We assume that you have it at home. Yeah. In your uh, home you environment. Could, you could use the tall hidden though, because to make. Yeah, it's all in the works. I don't want to like give you a promise okay. stuff, but to uh, follow the casa huddle Twitter or whatever you are. And, We'll be releasing some really exciting stuff in the next two, three weeks. Cool things coming along those lines <coughs> as well. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.